Hello grade 12, welcome to my channel and let me show you something about what I call the three-step approach. This is an approach one can use in trigonometry as a whole. From simplifying trigonometric expressions to proving identities and essentially doing uh, solving of the trigonometric equations. So this question was shared to me by one of my students. And I figured it's a good one to show how this can help you if you master it. Now, question says, determine the numerical value of the following, exp I mean, of the expression below without the use of a calculator. Okay, great. So where do we begin? Obviously, our inspection should tell us that whenever we see angles greater than 90 degrees, we have to reduce them. So we use our three-step approach, which includes board mass, factorizations, and trigonometric identities. But board mass can be used applied. <coughs> that means brackets off. But now when we're saying this is applied, we are suggesting that here we are going to use a reduction formulae and core functions. Right? Right, and then still in an applied format, AS means special angles. Okay, then direct is just how we know it from arithmetic brackets, ordinals, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. Okay, factorization has three formats taking out the highest common factor, doing the difference of two squares. Of factorizing a trinomial all right and factorization is merely division but keeping what we divided by all right trig identities also become very important so let's start to show these steps now what we do here we obviously want to reduce so first of all we write our course then 198 is in the third quadrant, so this is 180 degrees plus 18 degrees. Okay, this is squared minus 2. All of this is divided by 7, sine 27 degrees. Cos 333 is 360 degrees minus 27 degrees. Now, when doing these reductions, don't worry about being strategic. Just reduce them first, and then you will use a strategy later. So, this is 4 into, we first handle the reduction. So, see, we are on reduction formula now. Cos in the third quadrant is negative. But this is squared minus 2. I don't know why I cluttered things here. I shouldn't. I have a bit of space. Okay. Divided by 7 sine 27 degrees. Now, cos in the fourth quadrant is positive, so we keep the same function. Nice. And then, what do we do? The next thing is we just handle brackets in general. Okay? Brackets in general this time. We just deal with that square. So this is 4 cos squared 18 degrees minus 2 divided by 7 sine 27 degrees cos 27 degrees. So what do we do next? Well, we will notice that we've got a highest common factor in the numerator. So we factorize by taking out the highest common factor. So 2 out, we remain with 2 cos squared 18 degrees minus 1 divided by 7 sine 27 degrees 
cos 27 degrees. Now this bracket is telling us that we have an identity. This is the cos double angle identity in expansion so we can reduce that. It reduces to 2 cos twice the angle is 36 degrees divided by 7 sine 27 degrees cos 27 degrees. So what do we do now? Well, we can see that this product looks like sine um, that what you call the double angle identity of sine but 7 is the issue now because it's an odd number but now what do we need to to sort this out we need a 2 to be in there so in maths logically we can multiply by 1 right but 1 strategically can be achieved if we say 2 divided by 2. So in maths, we can do anything as long as it gives us what we want. Literally multiplying an expression by 1 is not changing it. But we are using this as a means to an end. So this simply says, guys, apply logic as you go along. <coughs> okay. So... As you can see, our three-step approach took us as far as we could go, but then logic had to come in. Now let's see, what do we get here? We've got, sorry, we handle again multiplication this time directly. So the numerators multiply, we get 4 cos 36 degrees divided by, this is 7 times 2 sine 27 degrees cos 27 degrees. Can you see? Now we finally have our identity, our double angle identity of sine expanded. So this means we can reduce that. So this is 4 cos 36 degrees divided by 7 sine, now we double that angle, it's 54 degrees. Now what next? Now if we inspect, these are all acute angles, but they don't look alike. But now when we add them up, we get 90. So that means we can use our co-ratios. Co-ratios are part of the re uh, reduction formula. So we go there. Say so fine, we can change whichever we want. So this is for cos of 90 degrees minus 54 degrees divided by 7 sine of 54 degrees. And then we sort it out. This is the same as 4. Now the core function of cos is sine. 54 degrees it's positive because that's the first quadrant divided by 7 sine 54 degrees now can you see these two take care of each other and our answer is 4 over 7 great so that is it guys it's sorted but now the last step is to check with the calculator. Okay. So all you do, you just punch the original expression into the calculator and see if you get the same answer. But be very careful because you need to also introduce brackets there. So guys, that's how the three-step approach works. Uh, in a way, I'm sure you know all of these things by now, but I was just giving you a little bit of a push so that you can try to apply this technique and see how far it can take you. Otherwise, I'll see you some other time, guys. Goodbye.